Hi everyone, welcome to People in the Past. My name is Catherine Blouin. I'm Associate Professor in Classics and Roman History at the University of Toronto. And it's my very pleasure today uh, to chat with you a little bit about a topic I'm very much interested in. What is this topic? Well, I'm going to talk to you about the cult of the goddess Isis in the Hellenistic and Roman worlds. The goddess Isis uh, was by far the most popular of the ancient Egyptian gods in antiquity, uh, beyond Egypt, but also it was one of the main uh, goddesses in Egypt. She is um, the daughter of the earth god, Jeb, and of the sky goddess, Nut. And most importantly, she is uh, the sister and wife of uh, the god Osiris. The most famous story about Isis um, narrates how after her brother and husband, Osiris, was killed by the other brother, Seth, and dismembered, she managed to uh, piece him back together and bring him back to life. Following that, she and Osiris conceived of a son named Horus, who you can see on, these, uh, on two of the pictures on the slide. Horus uh, would eventually avenge his uh, father and uh, kick um, set out of the throne because he had taken on the throne of Egypt. And so he is known as kind of the first pharaoh. Uh, in later period, in, including in the Hellenistic and Roman period, which we're going to focus on today, um, Horus was known as Harpocrates. Now, before I move on to the next slide, just a little word on the picture in the middle. You might wonder, why is there a hole <laughs> instead of the face of Isis? Well, this is a relief from the temple of Philae, which you can now visit. It's close to the city of Aswan. And in the late antiquity, it was used as a church and the Christians at the time uh, had as a practice to deface. Uh, the faces of the gods that were on the wall. So that included this representation of Isis nursing Harpocrates slash Horus. Now, what sources or data do you look at? Well, today we will focus on one document, a document which I find extremely interesting and I hope you will too. It is known as an invocation to Isis. This is a text um, written on papyrus. Now you see on the slide part of this text. So what has come to us is about a meter long text um, with a lot of holes in it, uh, but still we have remains of 12 columns of text. The text was found in, um, on the site of an ancient town located in the Southern part of Egypt. The, the, the town is called Pemche in Egyptian and is uh, known as Oxyrhynchos. Um, that was its Greek name. It is a site where a lot, thousands upon thousands of papyri were found. So the papyrus was found in the rubbish mound of the city. So it was basically found because some people had thrown it away. Um, because of the handwriting, we know that it was written around the second century uh, CE, so at a time when Egypt was part of the Roman Empire. Uh, it is written in Greek. So Greek at the time is um, the language of the ruling elite, the official administrative language. Uh, however, let's bear in mind that uh, the vast majority of the uh, inhabitants of Egypt at the time were Egyptian speakers and that Egyptian remained all the way till uh, after the Arab conquest, the uh, language of the majority in Egypt. But this text was written in Greek. Uh, so it also tells us that uh, Isis was of great interest for Greek speakers in uh, the province. The beginning and the end of the invocation are lost. So we have kind of a middle part here on the other side of uh, the, tag, the, the papyrus, we have another text. So, you know, people in antiquity were also recycling their papers or maximizing uh, their use of it. 
This text is also written in Greek. It is another religious text, uh, a praise of Imutas Asclepios, who is a god linked to medicine and healing, uh, which um, is also a, a later form of the god Imhotep, who's also known as uh, the man who invented the pyramids. So although we don't know who wrote this text and who composed it, uh, it seems probable, let's say quite likely, that it was used in some religious uh, context. The part of the role that we have um, includes two different sections. The first one uh, we call, we people who study uh, these ancient texts call it the names of nations. So this is a type of religious text uh, that we know from other documents as well. And it's basically a list of places where Isis was worshiped. And next to each place, and sometimes it's, it's the name of peoples or geographical features. And next to that name, we have epithets, so qualifiers, qualities, or other names that are associated with the goddess. So let's read uh, some examples of that. So these are uh, taken from the English translation um, of uh, the papyrus, which were published in 1915. At Menutis, truth, at Menuis, seated before Io, on whose honor, then there's a hole in the papyrus, is founded. At, mm, then there's a hole, two letters missing, an astium, most great vulture-shaped, Aphrodite. At Taposaris Tauestis, Hera, giver. In the island, swiftly victorious. So all these places are in Egypt. Then a little later on, we move to places outside of Egypt where Isis is worshiped. At Rome, warlike. In the Cyclades islands of threefold nature, Artemis. At Patmos, young, at Paphos, hallowed, divine, gentle, in Chios, marching, at Salamis, observer, in Cyprus, all bounteous. Then people a little later, among the Amazons, warlike, among the Indians, Maya, among the Thessalians, moon, among the Persians, Latina, among the Magi, Kore, so that gives you an idea of the vast expanse of territory over which Isis was thought, at least by the people who read that hymn, to be worshipped. And now in reality, we've found, for instance, temples to Isis in Italy, in Pompeii and in Rome, and we know that she was actually worshipped way beyond uh, Egypt at the time. So um, although we're not sure that all the places named in this invocation had temp actual temple to Isis, we know that her cult was really uh, widespread uh, for real at the time. The second section of the text is a prose hymn to the goddess. So we don't have this list of places anymore, but we still have quite a bit of information about her power. So here's a little excerpt. You, ruler of the world, Guardian and guide, lady of the mouths of seas and rivers, skilled in writing and calculation, understanding, who also brings back the Nile over every country, the beautiful animal of all gods, the glad face of Lithi, which is the river of the underworld, the leader of the muses, the many-eyed, the comely goddess in Olympus, ornament of the female sex and affectionate, providing sweetness in assemblies, enemy hating, Lady Isis, greatest of the gods, first of name, Eosotis. So she was associated, uh, in addition to being associated with many goddesses, she was also associated with the star, Sotis. You didn't make the power of women equal to that of men. Lady of the land, bring the flood of rivers. And in Egypt, the Nile, in Tripolis, the Elefteros, in India, the Ganges, you have dominion over winds and thunders and lightnings and snows. You, the lady of war and rule, easily destroys tyrants by trusty counsels. You make great Osiris immortal. So 
She was quite powerful. Maybe she is still, who knows. So how can this document tell us about real people in the past? Well, it does so in more than one way. First of all, we need to look at this document as an object, right? So this text was written by someone, it was used, read out loud, listened to by many people, and eventually it was thrown away in the rubbish, either because it was too worn out, broken, or simply because whoever had custody of it thought it was not of any use to them, of any use to them anymore. Uh, so this is an actual object that had a life of its own in a religious context, and that tells us about how the goddess was worshipped in a way, and how, as an object, its life came to an end as well. It is also a text, obviously, and a text that gives us, as I've said, an idea of the vast expanse of territory throughout which Isis was worshipped. So this is also backed up by archaeological evidence. And interestingly enough, we know of other invocation of Isis um, that uh, were found in Egypt, but we also know of um, texts related to her mysteries, uh, including um, the last book of a novel written by a North African author called Apuleius. Apuleius lived in the second century, so at the time this uh, document was written, and the novel is called The Metamorphosis. Now the structure of this text, so the structure that goes from Upper Egypt, it seems to the Delta and to beyond Egypt, uh, seems to indicate that the text maybe was written a bit like a milfrey. So it, it, it seems possible that there's an original that dates from before the Roman period and maybe before the Hellenistic period as well. And as Egypt became officially part of broader empires, new places were added to the list. So in a way, it's a living document. You have an idea here of all the places in the Delta that are named that we can locate. There's a whole bunch of them who, which we cannot locate yet. And this is a list of all the places and peoples located outside of Egypt that are listed also in the document. So it goes from Rome to India and uh, in the north from uh, the shores of the Black Sea all the way to uh, Egypt. So a very, very large expanse of territory. Lastly, um, this document also is a testimony to um, the fact that the goddess Isis was really conceived as a universal, all-powerful divine force and a feminine, all-powerful divine force. Uh, something which can seem strikingly different to uh, many people who are more used to a monotheistic religious context where the, the masculine is much more prominent. However, I want to end uh, by highlighting how the, the power of Isis endured and how it also made its way through to uh, Christianity. The slide here um, shows on the left a fresco of uh, Isis nursing Harpocrates or Horus. It was found in uh, Carinus, a site in the Fayum, and is dated from the same time as the invocation, so roughly the second century. Now, this iconography of Isis was Christianized, and in later period, this is frequently how the Virgin Mary and Jesus would be represented. So you have an example of that in uh, the middle of the slide. This is a fresco also from Egypt, but from a Christian monastery, which you can still visit today in the Wadi Natron, so a little south of Alexandria. And uh, this iconography of Isis turned Mary made its way well beyond Egypt, just like the cult of Isis. Uh, you can find an example on the right-hand side. This is a Baroque fresco uh, in a church in Lecce, so in southern Italy. That's it for me. Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, don't hesitate to click the subscribe button below. And if you like that video, there's plenty more. Just go and check it out on Peopling the Task main page. Thank you very much.